The Dawnblade subclass is one of the new subclasses for Warlocks coming in Destiny 2. I got to play with it a little bit while I was at the event, as well as take a look at how the talent trees were set up. Keep in mind that everything in this video is basically from an alpha level build of the game, so things are very much subject to change. Starting off, these subclasses look a lot different. Gone are the days of a grid-like structure where each column modified something. Now, things are split off into little sections like grenades, jumps, and other utility perks. Starting off, we have the super, called Daybreak. Popping your super buttons will allow you to enter a roaming super mode where you can fling swaths of fire from a flaming sword. The top section is for grenades. Nothing has changed here. You still have solar, firebolt, and fusion grenades. I can't speak to their damage output in PvE, but I do know that in PvP, damage appeared to be dropped on all of them. Fusion grenades do not one-hit anymore as well, so that's a plus. On the left, you have your special ability. The Dawnblade's ability allows you to place a pool of energy on the ground that can be stood in for a buff. You have a choice between Healing Rift, which heals as it's described, and Empowering Rift, which allows those inside it to gain a boost to their damage output. I got to use the Healing Rift a lot in PvP, and it definitely helped a bunch. The current build of the game has a very low regen time on shields, so anything to help you gain health is very vital. It didn't output enough healing to just allow you to tank shots forever, but you could turn the tide of a gunfight by popping it behind cover and peeking some shots out while regenerating health. The jumps down below are also the same as the current Sunsinger and Stormcaller jumps, Controlled Glide, Focus Burst, and Balance Glide. It seems that the jumps got tuned down a little bit compared to the ones in Destiny 1. They do not have properties that increase your speed, so try as I might, I could not Warlock Skate. The bottom tree off to the right has some abilities that has to be unlocked with a certain material. I don't know if the abilities up top have to be as well since they were already available to us. We don't know if you will be able to select all of the abilities like the section above or if you can only pick one. Also, I have no idea what this means, but at the very top it says Attunement of Sky. So putting on my tinfoil hat for a second, maybe to unlock these abilities we have to complete some sort of specific challenge. Generally, attuning requires going through some sort of trials or task or quest to be able to use or do an activity. Or maybe there's another attunement that we have to complete and it unlocks the bottom four abilities and then you can select which four you'll have active at a time. I really don't know and I'm sure we'll know more later. The top ability here is Firestarter, which modifies your melee ability to also increase your movement and reload speeds. Next is the Wildfire ability. This is a passive ability that allows you to fire weapons and throw grenades while gliding. So instead of just breaking your glide when you use one of these, you'll be able to gracefully descend from the heavens while dispatching people. Next is Everlasting Flames. Killing an enemy with Daybreak extends its duration. This is pretty self-explanatory. Much like Encore for Blade Dancer in current Destiny, if you kill something with your super while your super is active, you get some super energy back. This was always a fantastic PvE talent, especially in strikes with lots of enemies. The final one in this section is Blazing Dash. Pressing crouch twice while midair allows you to dodge. This sounds a hell of a lot like Twilight Garrison, but for warlocks. Moving up to the top section which was unlocked, we have Igniting Touch, a powerful melee ability that ignites enemies and causes them to explode. This is pretty similar to one of the current Sunsinger talents already. I didn't get to test it, but I imagine this will be a little bit more suited for PvE. The next ability is Risen Angel. While in midair, aim down your weapon to hover in place for a short time. Dealing precision damage will extend this effect's duration. This is a combination of Angel of Light with some fun bits added. I really enjoyed that precision damage, not kills, would extend the duration. It could also be activated multiple times in the air and for a much longer time than it currently can be in game. The next ability is Skyfire. While your Daybreak Super is active, Descend causes explosive damage where you land. If you watched some of the trailers, you saw this getting used. It's very similar to using the Slam on the Vault of Glass Relic. The last ability is Phoenix Dive. When in the air, if you hold Circle, you will quickly descend and regenerate some health. I wish I had read my subclass a little bit more before going into PvP, because holy crap, that would have been amazing to use there with the slower health regen. Also, this ability ties in with the previous Skyfire talent. That about does it for the subclass stuff. 
Keep in mind that this is basically an alpha build, so some of this stuff is probably there just to let us get an idea of how the subclass is going to play. I will say that it's nice seeing some good group support being built into the class via the Rift special abilities. Being able to drop a healing pool similar to Soldier 76 and Overwatch is going to be extremely valuable in both PvE and PvP. Adding in all the other offensive capabilities of the subclass will make for a pretty fun time in all of the activities too, I imagine. I especially like how you can modify your jump gameplay with Risen Angel and the Wildfire talents. With the gameplay being slowed down, things like this will actually make for an interesting PvP meta since you won't be able to just immediately die when floating in the air. I will say that the subclass was incredibly fun to play. I cannot wait to see how the other talents end up playing into the final build. The one worry I have is that these two sections on the right just get completely filled out. That doesn't leave a hell of a lot of customization to the subclass. Basically the only differing things in builds will be what your ability does, jump type, and grenades. While it certainly makes things easier on the balancing side of the game, I hope it doesn't end up affecting how we fulfill the fantasy of playing these characters. I hope you found the information here helpful. If you did, a positive rating would be appreciated. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.